Hi there, how is everyone doing today? Welcome to another Facebook Live with me. Okay, so today I'm trying yet new technology, um, different from what I've used before. I'm using a software called Wirecast in the hope that I myself can read your comments. So I would love to be able to um, get your feedback on it because I want to be able to address you directly and see your names and call out your names. So I'm going to put on my glasses and I'm going to see, aha, okay, I see something popped up. And, um, if, and so this way, hopefully, I can address your questions directly. Um, so here's the topic for today is that it is more important to be yourself than it is to be positive. And I'm going to dive into the topic in a moment. Once I find, ah, I see it. Hi, hi, Chris Duncan. Hi, Margie Pedersen. Hi, hi, Lourdes. Lourdes. Oh, hi, Philippe God Godfroy. I see you on uh, a lot and welcome. Thank you for participating. And Shaku, oh my gosh, the, the comments are going by so fast, so fast. And if there's any problems, if there's any sound issues or view issues and uh, anything like that, please let me know because, again, as I said, this is a new software and I would love to know. And the other thing I want to say is that when you're trying to watch it here, the, this particular software, I've got Facebook up and so your comments are going by really fast and later I will go back and read your comments, but I want you to know I value every single one of you, every single comment. Um, I love to know where you're from and I love to know your questions. But if I don't address you personally right now, during the video, or even after the video, please, please don't take it personally. Please don't. Um, I really do value every single one of you. And just to show you, um, there was uh, somebody who posted this question last week. And I go back and I pick the relevant questions. And when I say relevant, it's relevant to the subject that I'm talking about. I know all your questions are relevant, but I pick the one that I resonate with, which addresses, which gives me a good topic to talk about. So Marianne Bill or Marianne Billy, she asked um, and she says, I would love to hear your answer as I can't really sleep at night because of this. Is the law of attraction real or made up? Does this mean we can literally attract anything into our lives from objects, love or money to illness? It is so, so much like a new age American dream kind of thing. And do you also have sad days? You seem to have it all figured out. Thanks so much. So a couple of points in there. Yes, absolutely. I do have sad days. I mean, if somebody I know passes, transcends into the other realm, even though I know that they're fine, I know that they're free, I do miss them. And uh, I absolutely do have sad days. There are things that can go wrong and do go wrong and does make me sad. When somebody hurts my feelings, it makes me sad. Um, when somebody is mean to someone else, when people get killed, it makes me sad. So yes, a lot of things make me sad. And so the other part of your question, Marianne, was that uh, do, you seem to have it all figured out. So I just want to, um, I just want to correct that because actually one of the things I worry about is that speakers and teachers and all like myself, when we come on and we speak to you, um, I worry about giving you the impression that I'm some kind of guru and I know all the answers and I have it all figured out because I don't. I may have died. I may have a different perspective on things. And yes, I have a different perspective on things from what you are being fed or taught in this paradigm. I bought into the old perspective of this paradigm at one time because I didn't, I hadn't had this other perspective of leaving my body, but it doesn't mean that I know everything or I have it all figured out and that my life is peachy every single day. And it's important for you to know this because sometimes when you're following a particular author, teacher, speaker, or whatever you want to call them, when you're following one of them, and they're telling you and they're trying to help you like me. I'm trying to help you and I'm trying to say, no, this is how you do it. This is the way we do it. And, and when your life is still going wrong, you're like, oh my God, I must be so stupid. I must be so dumb. Why aren't I getting it? 
So that's why it's important for me to tell you this, that you're not stupid, you're not dumb. If your life is falling apart, it does not mean you're not getting it. It's part of the journey. Bear in mind, if this is if, if you're, the reason you're not getting it is because you're stupid or dumb, I must have been really stupid because it took death for me to figure it out. I mean, how far do you need to go to figure it out? So I must be like the stupidest person in the world because really it took death for me to learn how to live. And the reason I share it is because I don't want you to have to reach that point. But remember, whatever point you are in in your life, you're still way better than where I was. So don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up. So going back to the law of attraction. Yes. And oh, and also, please know that I don't have it all figured out. I just try and share things from the perspective of where I've been and my experience of what I do and what I learned, because I want I don't want people to have to go through the same suffering and, and die, basically. So anyway, the law of attraction. Um, when I was really, really sick, when I was going through the cancer, many, many people said to me, you attracted it to you. Your thoughts attract your reality, so you must have attracted the cancer at some level. Now, even if this is true, it's really stressful to feel that when you're sick, because you have, if you knew how you attracted it, you would unattract it. And if the cancer is progressing, you feel even worse. You beat yourself up. You judge yourself. And I'd love to hear in the comments, any of you that are actually relating to what I am saying right now, do you feel more judgmental about yourself because you're going through an illness or you're going through negative things in your life and you feel you attracted it because you believe in the law of attraction. So this is the downside of the law of attraction, which when you are going through negativity, when you're going through illnesses, if it doesn't serve you to believe in the law of attraction, if you are finding that you're judging yourself, you're beating yourself up, you're adding to your stress, because remember, it adds to your stress to judge yourself and beat yourself up and think, I brought this on, I'm so dumb, how can I get out of it? And then when you're not able to get out of it, you beat yourself up even more. Um, so it's not adding to it. And a lot of people go through it. I went through it when I was ill. It was when I died that I realized that it was more important to be myself than it was to be positive. Because while I was going through the illness and I believed that my thoughts had brought it on, so I kept thinking I must be a really negative person. The minute that you believe that your thoughts brought on this negativity that you're in, you start to watch your thoughts. At least I'm speaking for myself. I started to watch my thoughts. I started to become paranoid about my thoughts. And I started to become really fearful of my thoughts. Now, when you become paranoid and fearful of your thoughts, that is what you are being. And that is what you are, the signals you're sending out. So you attract who you are, not what you are thinking. You attract who you are. And when you have to watch your thoughts, when you believe that your thoughts are negative, unless you suppress your negative thoughts and you watch your thoughts, you are sending yourself the message that who I am is a negative person. And so I have to watch my thoughts in order to change. That is the message you are sending yourself. And that is how we attract all, you know, whatever negative things. And in actuality, sometimes even illness, even though we may think it's a negative thing, it may be the best thing for us. It actually may be a positive thing, which is why I tell people, I make it really easy. You don't have to figure it out. Don't figure out, don't watch your thoughts. Don't try and figure out whether what I'm going through is negative or positive. All you have to do is love yourself, love yourself. When you love yourself, you realize that every part of the journey is important to take yourself to the next stage. I mean, if I didn't have cancer, um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I was killing myself even before I had the cancer. So even the cancer was a positive thing for me because it's taken me to where I am today. But there could have been a shortcut to getting where I am today if I knew to love myself. 
And when you love yourself, all you have to do is be who you are. When you watch your thoughts and you filter your thoughts, what you're doing <clears throat> is that you're suppressing what you believe is negative. You end up suppressing parts of yourself. And that's something I don't encourage you to do. Because then again, you're sending yourself the message that there are facets of myself that is not good. It's not acceptable, that it's flawed. There's something wrong with me. And actually, at your core, you're beautiful, you're perfect. And the people who are most susceptible to beating themselves up and judging themselves and watching their, their thoughts and, and thinking that they're negative, the, the people who are most susceptible to that, you are the super sensitive, empathetic people. And you are the ones that suppress yourself to the point that you get an illness. And then you believe that you attracted the illness with your negative thoughts and then you suppress yourself even more. Please tell me if you relate to that. That was me. That was me to the core. And so this is why I tell you, please, please love and honor yourself. Don't filter your thoughts. Just be who you are and trust that who you are is not negative. You are at your core a positive person and you deserve to be loved and honored. So what does it mean to love yourself? That's a question that keeps coming up. What it means <clears throat> to love yourself is to love your life. That's the same thing. Loving yourself and loving your life is the same thing. Do you love your life? And loving your life means, are you in a great place in your life right now? Even if sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going through obstacles and challenges, you can still love your life and go through obstacles and challenges. I go through obstacles and challenges all the time. <clears throat> you know, for me, um, there are so many challenges. One of them is that my mom, who's getting older and lives on the other side of the world, I miss her and she misses me. And <clears throat> I go and visit her frequently. But when I visit her, she lives in a town where it's harder for me to do the work I do. It's harder for me to do Facebook Lives. It's harder for me to communicate with the people on this side of the world with whom a lot of my work is linked with, like the making of my movie, my editor who helps me write my books, and, and so on. So, <clears throat> so it feels like I always have to choose between being there for my audience, which I really love. I love communicating with you with, on Facebook Live or being there for my mom who is on the other side of the world. So these are the kinds of challenges I face every single day. And so, um, but it doesn't mean that I don't love my life. And so you, so the way to love yourself is to create a life that you love. And so I see these challenges are just obstacles that are kind of like um, taking me to a stronger place. So I figure out ways on how I can meet my mom more often. I figure out ways on how I can Skype her and have people help her with the technology. And, and, then, and every time I go see my mom, it's an amazing experience. But every time I have to leave her, it's really sad. But then I look forward to the next time. And it makes what I do here with you more valuable because I have to keep breaking away and seeing my mom. So, uh, and... I face all kinds of other different challenges like getting visas because I travel so much and I'm now trying to get the visa to live in the U.S. for longer. And, and so there are always challenges, but it doesn't mean I don't love my life. So what, what you need to ask yourself is, do I love my life? And if the answer is yes, then it actually means you do love yourself. So the other thing to ask yourself is, do, do I receive? Am I open to receiving? So many of you who don't love yourself, who judge yourself, are not good at receiving. You, it, underneath, and I, I was like that, and it comes up from time to time for me, we feel that we need to keep proving ourselves to be worthy and, dis, and, and deserving of receiving. We don't believe that we are worthy. So this is something I want you to check within yourself. And if you feel that way, the way to um, heal that, one of the ways to heal that is to allow yourself to receive abundance. Every day, do something beautiful for yourself that you wouldn't normally do. And it could be anything from cooking yourself a nice meal to soaking in a tub or going to a movie that you felt you didn't have time to go. 
And I want you to stop becoming aware of receiving from other people and you can thank them for whatever you receive, whatever they're giving you, but do not turn it down. Do not feel obligated that you immediately have to make up for receiving it. These are the kinds of things I want you to watch out for. Do you have a habit of immediately feeling, oh my gosh, I have to make it up to them. Now I have an obligation to do this. I can't say no the next time they ask me for something because they gave me this gift. Now remember, when someone gives you a gift, they're doing it without any expectation. If they have an expectation, then it's not a gift. Then the, what they feel for you is not love. It's, it's conditional. That means it's, um, it's an obligation. So, But you do not have to feel the obligation. If you feel an obligation, then don't accept the gift. But be aware that you are allowed to accept gifts without feeling an obligation. Because chances are the person giving you the gift is doing so because you have done something to make them feel they want to repay you. You have already done it. So the gift is a repayment for you being who you are. The gift is not something to make you feel, oh my gosh, what can I do now to make up for it? Because if that's how you feel, then that's not a gift. So remember, it's more important to be who you are than it is to be positive. Because if you believe that you need to be positive and you need to sacrifice who you are, then the message you're sending yourself is that who you are is not good enough. Who you are is not positive. So you have to suppress parts of yourself to be positive. And that's not a good message to send yourself. So really easy. All you have to do is love yourself, love your life, honor yourself. And then whatever that's truly yours will come to you. You don't have to worry about vision boys. You don't have to worry about trying to manifest more money or the love of your life. Or um, You don't have to worry about any of those things. Because the more that you allow your true self to come through, the more that what is truly yours will come to you. It's actually that easy, but we make it complicated. And I am ready for any of your questions. If you want more clarity, my preference is questions asking for more clarity of what I just said. So please shoot, please ask all the questions you want. And I'm going to see if I can catch your comments. They keep disappearing. Um, Thomas uh, Sadila, since birth, we all experience all kinds of separation from our mother. Do you think the separation from the source is real? I feel like yes and no at some point in the same time. This separation is not real. We are conditioned to believe in the separation. But in actuality, the separation is not real. Um, so when you do things like when you go out in nature, when you connect with the universe, when you listen to certain music, I truly believe music has this ability to alter our mind in such a way to open it up to receive the messages from the universe. That connection is always there. Every single one uh, of, of you is connected. The only difference is whether you choose to believe it and choose to stay connected or not. Some people choose to honor the connection and some people don't. Some people prefer to, fall, um, to believe that the outer world is realer, this physical world is realer than the other side, and, um, and, and it's just your choice. Somebody, a message popped up and disappeared. I didn't catch her name. She said, what do you say to naysayers about your story? I honor them and love them as much as everybody else because I don't feel it's my responsibility to convince people of what happened to me. I have the medical records to prove it. Uh, for people who need to see the medical records, please Google me, um, Anita Mojani, with Dr. Oz. You'll see that he scrutinized my medical records. He had me on his show, um, and he held up the medical records. And, uh, and also, I put a testimonial in my book, Dying to Be Me, written up by another oncologist, Dr. Peter Coe. Uh, and so I've put it all out there. And after that, it's up to you whether it helps you or not. Um, the other thing I want to say about naysayers is that every, you know, like um, a lot of people have beliefs which they hold on to very tightly. And if they let go of those beliefs, it destroys the very fabric of their life. It destroys what they have based their life on. 
So, for example, if um, if you are somebody that is immersed in hardcore evidence-based materialism, you know, material-based science, where you need things to be replicated in a controlled environment like a laboratory before you believe in it, let's say, and, and the things that you teach and lecture or practice are based on that. And it's what you've been doing and it's what your livelihood is based on. And then somebody comes along and what they say threatens everything you believe in. And it's scarier to let go of what you have built your life on than it is to embrace um, something new that's completely different. Because if you embrace this new thing that you've just heard, even though that person has proof, it means you have to let go of this life you've been living and the livelihood and that, you're, that your income is based on and everything, not just your income, but the life that you've built is based on this belief. So if something new comes in that threatens that belief, it's very difficult to let it go. And I'm actually going to share a, a story about this, is that when I was in the hospital, my oncologist who treated me could not explain what happened to me. He could not explain it, and he even told me he couldn't explain it. He said, I don't even know what to make of you and what to write in, uh, in your medical records. And I'm sharing this because I think that it's relevant for many of you who had experiences that you're afraid to share. I would love for you to share them. So anyway, my oncologist said, I don't know how to even make of what happened to you because um, the healing, he just couldn't, he didn't know how to even put it in my medical records. So when I told him what had happened to me in the other realm and how I felt I'd left my body, he said to me, he completely believed me because he didn't know what to write in my medical records because he saw the miraculous healing. He said to me, I, uh, I completely believe you because you're not the first person, you're not the first patient I've had to share a story like this. So I was really pleased he believed me. Now, he was the head of oncology at one of the top teaching hospitals in Hong Kong. He was a professor of oncology at the top university in Hong Kong. And he was involved in developing the best cancer drugs like chemotherapy and so on. And he had administered a cocktail that um, he had approved of. And yet he knew that um, chemo drugs don't always work. He knew the critical stage I was in. He said that I was critical and there was no hope um, at the time I was dying. So he knew all this. And when I healed, he said, I can't explain it. I believe you. And you are not the first person to share what you share, shared about having an out-of-body experience. Completely empathetic. Anyway... After, the, after I came out of hospital and I was interviewed by a newspaper who was very interested in what had happened to me, and then after they interviewed me, they said to me that, um, would your oncologist be willing to verify what you have just said? And I said, absolutely, he knows about it. He himself said he's, um, you know, he can't explain it. He even said that and he even made the gesture of, throwing my medical record file into the dustbin, into the trash, because he said, this is of no use to me. I can't explain it. So when the newspaper went to talk to him, I was really confident he'd say something to back me up. When the article came out, I was really surprised because he didn't say anything like that. For the newspaper article, he said that I was lucky to be alive. And yes, I was very, very critical. But he said that it was the procedures they administered that healed me. Um, so it was really interesting that his story changed. When another oncologist who was retired and had nothing to lose, he studied my case and he said, whichever way I look at it, you should be dead. And he said, I'm going to write up a testimonial for you, for you to use to help um, share your story. So I said to him, how come my first oncologist didn't feel that way? And in the newspaper interview said what he said. And this second oncologist said, I don't blame him because when I was practicing, I would have done the same thing. 
it's a very, very tough industry. He knew what you went through. And, and, this, and so this is the second oncologist telling me, oncologists know that it's not an exact science, but they are under so much pressure in the industry and their position is under so much pressure, they can't compromise it. They can't come across as being seen as quacks. But he said, I'm retired. And then he even said to me, he said, cancer scares me, but the, but the drugs, the protocols for cancer scares me even more. And in other words, the diagnosis scares me and the, um, and, and the drugs, the, the healing of cancer scares me even more. And so I'm interested in studying cases like yours because I want to know what it is that triggers the healing. And so I would be happy to send your case to five different cancer institutes, which he did. And every single one wrote back and said they have never seen a case of such advanced cancer reverse in such, um, in such a speedy amount of time as quickly as mine did. They've never seen such a case before. And so he even verified it for me. And yet, it's really interesting. So after he wrote that testimonial, what's really interesting is even though I had a lot more people believing me, and I was even invited on Dr. Oz, there is one little forum in the far corner of the earth, somewhere uh, on, this, uh, on the internet, on the World Wide Web, where there are a bunch of people that actually trash this oncologist who verified me and call him a quack for doing so. So this is the paradigm we live in. And this is what I want to tell you, is that when we are immersed in this physical world, um, you know, there are moments where I feel, why don't those people believe me? But then I think, that's their thing. When we are immersed in this physical world, what ends up happening when we need evidence-based, material-based evidence um, for every little thing, we actually miss out on the gifts in the world. So when people don't believe my story, when there are naysayers, I actually feel for them. I feel it's their loss, and I feel that they're missing out on a lot because I had my healing. I know what happened. And I'm open to so much more, so many more of these experiences in my life. And my life has actually, having said everything, that I do face issues, I haven't got it all together, but I will say one thing, I love my life and it does have a magical quality about it when you know that the other realm is real, when you know that there's more than this physical world, your life takes on a really magical quality. So don't worry about the naysayers, don't let them drag you into their world. Please, if you have stories like this, share it. We want to reach a tipping point where more people realize this is true than the other way around. Um, gosh, thank you. Susie Novis says, you put words into what I've known in my heart. Thank you so much for that. Trisha Carlos, what about dreams and wishes and how we want to be? Do we focus on it? Dreams and wishes and your imagination are your truth. They're your connection to your truth. Your dreams are who are a insight into your truth. Your imagination are your insight into your truth. When I say dreams, I mean your dreams, your wishes, your aspirations. They are your insights into who you desire to come here to be. And you have to listen to them. We have to listen to our inner voice. We've made the sound of the outer world stronger than our inner voice. You have to change that. Listen to your inner voice. How do you know that your inner voice is telling you the truth? Okay, so the difference between the real connection to your higher self or the voice of the fears of the outer world, your real connection will never make you feel fear. The, um, the, the deceptional voice or the one of the outer world makes you feel fear. The voice that tells you, who do you think you are? No, you can't do this. Or your dreams are too big. Those are not your real higher self. Those are not your true self. That is not your calling. That is not the person you came here to be. The voice that's telling you, um, you need to follow your heart. You need to be an artist or a singer. This is what you need to do. That voice is real. So why do so many people fail even when they follow their heart and follow their inner voice? You know why? Because when they start to follow their heart, 
they have people from the outer world telling them that they're crazy and that they and what they're doing is wrong and what they're doing is delusional and they need to go get a real job and then that outside voice becomes louder that's how they fail because they get confused between the outside voice and the inside voice the voice of our paradigm versus the voice of our heart if you can tune out the voice of the paradigm um, of fear and tune in to your inner voice you won't fail you will have challenges but every challenge is part of the journey every if you follow that inner voice that inner voice will take you to where your calling is the difference between our <clears throat> our destiny and our free will is that our destiny is our highest potential but we have the free will as to whether we want to attain it or not there is always free will but we come here with a intention to doing certain things to changing the world in a certain way to being a certain way to fulfilling certain dreams that is what i would <clears throat> call our destiny it's our highest potential it's our intention of what we came here to do it's not written in stone but it is what our higher calling knows we came here for but we have the free will of whether we choose to attain it or not we can fall into listening to the voices of this physical paradigm that's been created we can listen to the fears and we can lose our way but everybody can connect to it again nobody is exempt nobody is forsaken everybody can tap into that self again how you do it you do it by tuning out the outside noise you do it by going on an information detox by tuning out you can tune out social media for a while you can tune out um you know websites that are constantly giving you fear based messages i tune out the news i have people telling me that i bury my head in the sand and you need to stay uh, on top of what's happening in the world believe me you don't need to stay in fear all the time you can tune <clears throat> you can tune into the news if it's something that you enjoy but if it is making you feel fearful of the world outside i would suggest take long breaks from it i certainly do and my my life works better for it don't you know don't let people tell you how you should live your 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 life do what you need to do um um disconnect from social media pages that only feed you hate based anger based fear based messages and tune into that inner voice i know you need to come out into the world sometimes but remember wherever you go you take yourself and you want to take somebody who is filled with love who is filled with laughter who is filled with joy you want to take that person wherever you go because that is what you will share and spread around you don't want to take a fear based person wherever you go you don't want to take someone who is filled with anger fear and who's needy wherever you go because you won't be a pleasant person to be around and you will be miserable yourself so yeah i love this linda uh, linda figura throw away your televisions you're being programmed to be fearful yes that's what i feel i've been attacked for saying that but yes that is exactly what i feel uh feras zurikat you are empowering us i feel it thank you thank you um can throng happy spring yes same to you happy spring and i will go back and read all your beautiful messages thank you thank you thank you and namaste from trisha carlis uh, i'll take one last question what do you think about all of the very public celebrity divorces is this part of the divine plan why is this happening it seems like time ruins relationships i think what's happening okay so i'm just going to guess i think more and more people are starting to come into their truth and they are starting to realize that possibly they came together for the wrong reasons also people change people grow as long as they're being authentic as long as people can lead each other in the most loving way possible i honor people being who they are i have no judgment towards people coming together or people coming apart doesn't matter because truly the only thing i believe in is love the only thing i advocate is love and as long as you come from a place of love you're doing good in the world that's all you need to do all you need is to bring love wherever you go but 
But the most important thing is in order to bring love wherever you go is to bring love to yourself first. If you don't bring love to yourself first, if you don't love your life, if you don't love yourself, if you're not honoring yourself, if you're not allowing yourself to receive, and if all you're doing is bringing love wherever you go, you can start to become drained. Many of us, including me, was brought up to believe that it's selfish to love myself. If you've been programmed that way, you need to change that. You need to think of yourself in terms of a smartphone. And if you give and give, you're, you are discharging battery. And if you don't receive, you're not charging battery. So in order to charge your battery, you need to do good things for yourself. You need to receive. You need to receive love. You need to love your life. You need to follow your passion, follow your heart, spend time with people you love, follow your joy, do things that make you happy. Um, being spiritual and being and loving yourself is one and the same thing. Being spiritual and being authentic is one and the same thing. Being spiritual and being creative is one and the same thing. Being spiritual is not something completely different that you have to work at. You don't have to meditate more unless you want to. When you realize that you love your life, your whole life becomes a meditation. You don't need to take time out to meditate. So on that note, listen to music, be happy, laugh, eat chocolate, have fun with your loved ones. Don't worry. Let go of life. I love you guys. I'm going to read all the comments and thank you so much for tuning in. And please also, if you want to see me physically live, I would love to see you at my events. I've got a bunch of great events coming up, going to Europe all of next month. I'll be participating in the Edgar Casey event in a couple of weeks. Um, please check out the European events. And I will be doing Celebrate Your Life with Liz Dawn in, uh, in Chicago in June. I love Liz Dawn. Her events are amazing. If you can join us, it would be great. Thank you. See you. Love you. Bye. Till next week. Bye.